Phi Nguyen and I'm your host on Inside Vietnam. This is a fantastic market because of the strength of the population. You have to Vietnamize your content here. I would tell them to come on board, tell them what they, um, what they like or give them what they like. Vietnam is a very, very dynamic and exciting market. Greetings everyone, my name is Phi Nguyen and I'm your host on Inside Vietnam. Vietnam is recently seen as a very attractive destination for foreign investors with an improved business environment and rising trade confidence index. Now, according to the Global Enabling Trade Index Report 2010 released by the World Economic Forum, Vietnam's ranking has jumped 18 places for, from the number 89 in 2009 to number 71 in 2010 among 125 economies worldwide. According to the 2010 FDI Confidence Index released by A.T. Kearney, Vietnam ranked number 12 out of more than 80 countries to be most trusted by international investing community. So despite the coming behind China, India, Brazil, Germany, and Poland on the list of the five most attractive investment destinations, Vietnam still tops the list of Southeast Asian nations followed by Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. In order to provide the investment communities with sufficient and up-to-date information about Vietnam as a rising market in Southeast Asia and in the global economy, um, Inside Vietnam will bring you the insights into the market through our in-depth interviews with 26 experts who are invest investors or managing foreign investment firms in Vietnam in various key sectors. We're very happy today to have Mr. Ralph Mathias on the show, on our first show. Um, and the topic of the show is regional segmentation and overview of the market. Just a short bio on Ralph. Ralph established TNS Vietnam in 1996 as part of the TNS Global Group. His responsibilities not only cover the 10 offices of TNS nationwide, but also includes Cambodia, Laos, and Myanmar. TNS is currently servicing such multinational clients as um, Unilever, Ford, IBM, Nokia, G Money, AIG, UNICEF, and covers key sectors which includes automotive, business and finance, FMCG, healthcare, technology, retail, media, and social and public research. Thank you very much, Raf, for joining us today um, to be on the first show. Probably the first question I would ask would be, your personal confidence level towards Vietnam as a market? Uh, as you say, I've been, I've been here 16 years. And uh, to be honest, as someone who works for a global company, it's not typically my investment. I'm actually working for someone's investment. Uh, but having said that, I myself am investing in Vietnam right now in the format of a property and a home. And I can also say the last five, six years is what's actually changed my uh, viewpoint on Vietnam in terms of uh, feeling confident and comfortable. Let's start with the first question. Um, everybody talks about Vietnam and, and Vietnam is on the rise at the moment. Would you be able to give us um, an overview of the population and de demographics of Vietnam? Vietnam's uh, uh, population has grown by roughly about uh, almost a million people a year for about the past 15, 16 years. So today our population is about 86 million people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Having said that, uh, that actually makes Vietnam the sixth largest population in Asia and the 13th largest globally. Uh, Vietnam actually has a very controlled uh, population growth and it's something that the government is actually quite concerned about. So what's the urban and suburban or rural split in Vietnam at the moment and, and um, how is that impacting the, um, the consumer market in Vietnam? Presently you've got about 30% of the population that lives in urban Vietnam mm -hmm. and 70% that is in rural Vietnam. Suffice it to say, uh, urban Vietnam, the 10 key cities, actually make up 29% or 30% of the population, mm -hmm. but 50% of the GDP in terms of the, the, the cities themselves. Oh, okay. But if you look at the actual split, rural Vietnam holds 60% of GDP and urban Vietnam uh, holds 40%. Mm -hmm. So uh, the point simply is, is that there's still a, a, a huge amount of opportunity with respect to population demographics. Mm -hmm. uh, on average, a city like Ho Chi Minh City, which is 7.5 million, yeah. has roughly about 200,000 yeah. uh, Vietnamese moving into the city every year. Mm -hmm. uh, Hanoi, which is uh, officially about 6.5 million, mm -hmm. uh, is obviously the second largest city. And then you have uh, Haiphong mm -hmm. and a few others. 
but there's actually only four cities and over a million people, mm -hmm. but two of them are mega cities, and that's Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. The Ministry of Planning and Investments, Foreign Investment Agency, reported that committed foreign direct investment capital from January to October was $12.79 billion, down 41.9% against the same period last year. There were 752 newly registered projects and 210 expanded projects, down 19.1% and 34.4% against the corresponding period, respectively. However, analysts said that the decline did not mean Vietnam was less attractive to foreign investors, but it reflected downward global FDI inflows. According to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, global FDI in the third quarter declined against the second quarter and the same period last year, after four quarters of slow recovery in the wake of global financial crisis. Although the economy was facing challenges like high inflation, trade deficits, a weakened local currency and poor infrastructure, many foreign investors appreciated the nation's growth potential. Vietnam was ranked 12th for attracting FDI among markets this year, according to a recent survey by international consulting group AT Kearney. The most attractive sectors were healthcare, consumer goods, financial services, energy, especially environmental friendly energy and high technology. The nation has set goals to balance investment among sectors and localities and draw investment in environmental protection, real estate development and technology transfer using preferential taxation. It will also focus on administrative reform and inadequate infrastructure and human resources, as well as increasing the professionalism of investment promotion efforts.